Okay, in this video we're going to calculate this very interesting sum. So first we want to define the nth harmonic number to be the sum as k goes from 1 to n of 1 over k. So notice this is a sequence, and it's a sequence of numbers that's divergent as n approaches infinity, and we know that because the harmonic series itself diverges. But there are some interesting um, combinatorial facts that you can build out of these uh, harmonic numbers, and one of them will be this sum that we're going to calculate. Notice I haven't given you the value of it. We'll hold on to that until the end. So what we're going to do is calculate the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of the nth harmonic number divided by n times 2 to the n and we're going to need this following lemma to do this calculation. So if we let li sub 2 of x, so this is called the dilogarithm function, it's part of a family of functions called polylogarithms and this is equal to minus the integral from 0 to x of natural log of 1 minus t over t dt and I should say that there's a bunch of ways to define um, these family of functions and this is just the integral way to define this family of functions. Then the value of this dilogarithm function at one half is equal to pi squared over 12 minus half natural log of 2 squared. So let's get started uh, proving this value of the dilogarithm function and then we'll use that to find the sum of this series. So the first thing that we're going to do is establish an identity involving this dilogarithm function. So let's say li sub 2x, so uh, that is equal to negative the integral from 0 to x of natural log of 1 minus t over t dt. And now we're going to use some properties of integrals to break this up into two pieces. So this is going to be minus the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of 1 minus t over t dt. And then plus the integral from x to 1 of natural log of 1 minus t over t dt. And now let's sort of talk our way through that. Notice if we were to um, subtract this to this side of the equation, we would just have the normal um, formula for splitting up an interval. Okay, so now we need to calculate this first integral. Notice this first integral is just a number, and the second integral is a function. And we'll calculate the number that this first integral is using power series. So we're going to say this is negative 0 to 1 of 1 over t. And now we can rewrite the natural log of 1 minus t as the integral from 0 to t of 1 over 1 minus s ds, and that is inside of this t integral. Okay, good. But now notice we're off by a sign from doing this because if we take the antiderivative of this guy, we're going to get negative natural log of uh, 1 minus t, but that's going to cancel this minus sign out here. Okay, good. Now let's work down on this term a little bit more. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over t. And now we can expand this as a geometric series. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to t of the sum n equals 0 to infinity of s to the n um, ds and then dt. Okay, so we'll stop at this point and we'll bring that up to the top of the board um, once we've calculated the other integral a little bit. Okay, so I want to do a substitution here. So I'm going to let s equal 1 minus t, but now that's going to be the same as t equals 1 minus s, and that means dt equals minus ds. And that's going to change this integral into the following. So notice we're going to get the integral from 1 minus x, because when t equals x, s equals 1 minus x, and then that's going to go up to 0. Because again, when t equals 1, s equals 0 by our substitution. And then um, finally, we're going to get a minus sign out here for this dt. So I'll put a minus sign out there for that dt. And then we're going to have the natural log of s over 1 minus s ds. 
but now we can use this minus sign to switch these bounds of integration. So that's going to give us plus the integral from zero to one minus x of natural log of s over one minus s ds. Okay, great. And now I'll stop there as well. I'll bring these up here and then we'll work more on our calculation. Okay, so I've brought our last step up from the bottom of the board. Notice we have this dilogarithm di function evaluated at x is this kind of crazy two integrals and a sum inside of those, and then we have that integral over there. So now let's work on this one a little bit. So we'll term by term anti-differentiate this inner integral, and that's going to give us the integral from zero to one of one over t, and then we're gonna have the sum n equals zero to infinity of s to the n plus one over n plus one, and that's evaluated from zero to t, and then that's still inside of that integral. Okay, so we've got something like that, but now what I wanna do is re-index this thing, so I can send n to n minus one, and we will also evaluate this at t. So notice, doing n to n minus one, that's gonna change this to start at a one, this is now going to turn into an n, and this is now going to also turn into an n. Okay, so let's see what th this gives us. This gives us, so we're going to pull the sum out. We have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the antiderivative from 0 to 1 of 1 over t, and now we have uh, t to the n over n dt. So that's what we have for that term. Now we're gonna work a little bit on uh, this right-hand term and we're actually gonna do this with integration by parts. So here we'll let u equal the natural log of s, which makes du equal one over s ds. And thus we need to have dv equal one over one minus s ds, which will make v equal negative natural log of one minus s, okay? So now bringing this down, we have v times u, but that's going to give us minus natural log of s times natural log of 1 minus s evaluated from 0 to 1 minus x, and then minus the integral of v du, but notice there's a minus sign built in here, so that gives us plus the integral from 0 to 1 minus x of v du, so that's natural log of 1 minus s over s ds. Now, let's evaluate this at the bounds. So notice if we put one minus x in there, that's going to give us minus natural log of one minus x times natural log of x. But then if we put zero in there, we have a problem. Notice we have natural log of zero, and that tends towards minus infinity, and the natural log of one, which is zero, so we have an indeterminate form. Anytime we've got that type of indeterminate form, we probably need to take some sort of limit, but I will say that if you do take a limit in this case, this part is going to zero out, so that means we don't need to worry about what we get when we plug zero in there because it's zero. Great, and then we have this right here, but notice this is exactly the dilogarithm function evaluated at one minus x, except for the fact that we're missing a minus sign. So this is minus dilogarithm function evaluated at one minus x. Now let's work on this thing a little bit. Notice we can take this t and cancel it with one of those up in the numerator, and that's going to give us the sum n equals one to infinity. Now if we take the antiderivative here, we're going to get uh, t to the n over n squared. So t to the n over n squared, but that's evaluated from zero to one now. Great, and then minus natural log of one minus x times natural log of x minus uh, the dilogarithm evaluated at one minus x. Good, but now what we can see is that this thing evaluated at one will give us the sum n equals one to infinity of one over n squared. And then the rest of this just can be brought down. So we have minus natural log of one minus x, natural log of x, minus dilogarithm evaluated at one minus x. So let's look at the extreme left-hand side and the extreme right-hand side, and we have an identity involving this dilogarithm. And we can use that 
to find this value of the di logarithm. So I'll clean up the board, bring this to the top, and then we'll find that value. Okay, so I've cleaned up the board and I've brought my final step up to the top and so we have this nice identity. This is sometimes called a duplication identity because we have uh, the di logarithm here in terms of the di logarithm or in other words just some function in terms of itself. Now what we want to do is set x equal to a half because our goal is to find this value right here. So notice that's going to give us this di logarithm evaluated at a half equals this sum, but this is a famous sum. This is uh, Euler's sum of the reciprocals of the squares, and this is equal to pi squared over 6. So I won't calculate that. There's a bunch of videos on the internet that calculate that kind of thing. And then now we have, this is minus, so we have the natural log of um, 1 half here, and then times another natural log of 1 half, so it's the natural log of 1 half squared, um, and then now we have minus di logarithm evaluated at one minus a half, but that's just a half. Okay, good. But now if we move that guy over, we get twice di logarithm evaluated a half equals pi squared by six. And then notice the natural log of one half is equal to negative the natural log of two, but we're squaring it so that minus sign disappears and we have the natural log of two squared. Great, but now what we can do is just divide both sides of the equation by two, and we have exactly this formula right here. And so, that's going to complete the proof of this lemma. Okay, so now armed with this result, we'll move on and uh, find the sum of this series. Okay, so now that we've proven our lemma, we're gonna get started towards the sum. And we're gonna need this following convolution formula, which is a formula for um, taking the product of two infinite sums. So we've got this infinite sum of the a n terms, infinite sum b m ter b n terms, and we take their product, then it's gonna be the sum n equals zero to infinity of the sum k equals zero to n of a sub k, b sub n minus k. So I won't prove that, but but um, that's easy to find a reference for if you need to. Okay, so now our next goal is to find the sum n equals one to infinity of um, hn x to the n. In other words, the generating function for the harmonic series. Okay, so how we're gonna do that is rewrite this as n equals one to infinity of the sum k equals one to infinity of one over k times x to the n. So now we can bring this x to the n inside as follows and then split some things apart a little bit. Notice we can write this as the sum n equals zero to infinity of the sum k equals one to infinity of x to the k over k, x to the n minus k. So notice those are exactly the same sums. Things have just been changed a little bit. But now we can notice that this guy is exactly something happening with this convolution formula. It's the right-hand side of this, where a n is maybe x to the n over n, and b n is just x to the n. So in other words, that's going to allow us to factor this into two infinite sums. The sum n equals zero to infinity of x to the n, sorry, the sum n equals one to infinity of x to the n over n times the sum n equals zero to infinity of x to the n. But now we can express these two sums as some more common functions. So notice this is just the geometric series formula, so that's one over one minus x. But then this is just the antiderivative of the geometric series formula, and so that's going to be minus natural log of 1 minus x. So we get that product there. Okay, so in other words, we have negative natural log of 1 minus x over 1 minus x. That is the generating function for these harmonic numbers. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board, I'll bring that to the top, and then we're close to getting to the sum of this series. Okay, so let's recall we just calculated the generating function for the harmonic sequence to be this 
um, minus natural log of one minus x over one minus x. And so now we're getting close to being able to calculate the sum. This almost looks like this generating function being evaluated at half, but it's not quite that because we've got this n in the denominator. So what that makes us think of is not this generating function evaluated at a half, but maybe the antiderivative of this generating function evaluated at a half, or something like it. So what we want to notice is uh, the following that will get us there. So we have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of hn over n x to the n. That's actually what we want. But that's equal to um, the antiderivative um, from 0 to x of the sum n equals 1 to infinity of hn t to the n minus 1 dt. So now let's make sure that works. Notice if we take the antiderivative of t to the n, we're going uh, to get t to the n over n. We evaluate that at, at x, we get exactly this term right here. Okay, so now we want to notice that this is equal to the integral from 0 to x of 1 over t and then this generating function of the harmonic sequence. Okay, so we have this is times minus natural log of 1 minus t over 1 minus t dt. So that's what we get there. Okay, so now notice we can bring the minus sign out front and we get minus zero to x natural log of one minus t over t times one minus t dt. Okay, so let's reiterate what happened here. We wanted a sum of this form. Great, because that looks close to our goal, evaluated at x equals a half. But we noticed that that was a sum of this form with uh, one less power of t and then the antiderivative, and that leads us to this closed expansion involving an integral. So now from here, I want to erase the board. I'll bring this up to the top, and then we're almost done. Okay, so let's recall we ended at this point. The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of hn over n. x to the n was this integral. Okay, so now we need to evaluate this integral, and we're going to start with partial fraction decomposition. So we're going to use the fact that 1 over t times 1 minus t equals 1 over 1 minus t plus 1 over t. So I'm skipping the steps of those partial fractions, but that's pretty easy to see. So that's going to allow us to write this as minus the integral from 0 to x of natural log of 1 minus t over 1 minus t dt. Good. And then minus the integral from 0 to x of natural log of 1 minus t over t dt. Okay, good. But now notice, this guy is exactly the dilogarithm by this definition right here, which we've played around with already. Great, so now we just need to calculate this integral, but this integral is not too bad with just plain old u substitution. So now notice if we let u equal this term, then now du is going to be all of that with the minus sign. So that's going to give us the integral of u du, Good, and now let's see if t equals zero, then u equals the natural log of one, which is still zero, good. And then if t equals x, then u equals the natural log of one minus x. Great, so we've got that. But now notice this is going to give us exactly the natural log of one minus x squared times a half, just because that's going to be u squared over 2, and then plus this dilogarithm evaluated at x. So we've got something like that. Okay, good. So now, uh, finally, I'm going to bring this to the top, clean up the board, and we're almost there. Okay, so we just derived this generating function. So we have um, the generating function for the nth harmonic number divided by n is equal to one half natural log of one minus x squared plus the dilogarithm evaluated at x. So in order to find our sum, all we need to do is set x equal to a half. So that'll give us the sum n equals one to infinity of hn over n 
n times 2 to the n. So that's going to give us a half natural log of a half squared plus um, this die logarithm evaluated at a half. But we spent the first bit of the video calculating the value of the die logarithm at a half, and we got this, pi squared over 12 minus half natural log of 2 squared. So let's notice that this bit is already natural log of 2 squared. Great, and we know that because natural log of half is negative natural log of 2, but we're squaring it. But then this guy is pi squared over 12 minus half natural log of 2 squared. So that means these two are going to cancel, and that gives us a final answer for the value of this sum to be pi squared over 12. Great, and that's the end of this video.